And now this. Two more babies in California have been diagnosed with microcephaly from Zika. That's according to officials. Both mothers were infected after traveling to countries that had outbreaks of the virus. The Rio Olympics opening ceremony tonight with thousands of people traveling to Brazil. Of course, one of the regions hardest hit by Zika. So the question is, can the outbreak be stopped or can it continue to spread with everybody going to Brazil? Plus, it's not just Zika that are prompting concerns in that country. Murder rates in Rio also on the rise. Doesn't sound great, does it? Uh, joining me now is Ambassador Patrick Duddy, former Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for the Western Hemisphere and the former U.S. Consul General in Sao Paulo, Brazil. So, uh, Patrick, you are very well, um, uh, you know, you know very well what goes on in Brazil, how that country ticks right now. We know of all the challenges, the economic challenges, uh, the social upheaval, all of that. And, of course, this is the background to the opening of the Olympics. Uh, let's begin with Zika. Um, is Brazil, uh, Brazil certainly was, was first on the radar for this problem. Um, are they equipped to handle, how, you know, a lot of people from around the world coming to the games and have they got a handle on it? Well, there are a couple of ways to answer that question. In the, in the first instance, the Brazilian officials um, working the Olympics are taking the, uh, uh, the threat of the Zika virus very, very seriously. Um, and uh, more generally, in terms of their ability to handle the e enormous crowds that are expected for the games, uh, Brazil has uh, uh, a lot of experience with handling major international events, and many of them are held in Rio de Janeiro, most recently, of course, um, the, uh, the World Cup games. Mm -hmm. I think the, the other um, key point here is that in addition to the efforts that are being made to eradicate the mosquito which carries the virus, um, there is um, uh, a seasonal consideration. We are in the, um, uh, the Brazilian winter, and while that um, doesn't resemble an American winter, the temperature drops enough to, um, uh, to kill suppress off the, the, um, uh, the, the virus. And indications are, uh, for instance, um, cases of dengue, which are, are carried by the same mosquito, are down. So um, Brazilian officials are optimistic that they will um, have this con uh, problem well in hand for the games. Ambassador, you look, well, there's lots of other uh, issues that have come to light. The, getting the, the uh, facilities built in time, we have the issue of, of course, the threat of terrorism. Uh, and we know that the crime rate is especially high in some of the major cities, uh, especially in Rio, where we, say, where we said that the, uh, the, the murder rate has gone up. With all of that as a background, do you think these Olympics can be carried off without incident? Well, one certainly hopes so. I know that um, um, the U.S. and other major nations who are participating all have their own security people in Rio de Janeiro. And um, there is a command center where all of these groups can cooperate with um, uh, Brazilian uh, federal officials who are taking the lead in security for the Games. What's interesting is if you think, if we turn the clock back, do you think Brazil would rather not have hosted these games? Because as you say, they got the World Cup in 2014, then straight after that we have the Olympics. That's an awful lot for a city to take on and a country which is, let's be honest, financially and politically struggling. Uh, did these games come at the wrong time for Brazil? Well, I think the, um, the Zika outbreak came at the wrong time. Um, but. Um, I believe that Brazilians are still optimistic that um, at the end of the day, uh, the games will be seen as um, a great success. The other, um, the other interesting point is that they have attempted to use the games to address a great many um, local infrastructure issues. Um, but even as they have done so, they've actually spent a smaller percentage of GDP on promoting the games and on building the facilities than typically is spent in many countries, certainly a much smaller percentage of GDP than was spent in Greece. Well, it all kicks off tonight. We hope it is a big success. Ambassador Patrick Duddy, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate it.